Coming up, Girl Power. We'll kick off Women's History Month with a look at some female trailblazers, pioneers, and record breakers. Then, spring forward, why we will lose an hour of sleep this weekend. Daylight saving time explained. Also, the sky's the limit for this team. And we're off to see the wizard. Plus, the first ever rock hopper penguin is hatched at this zoo in Texas. We're there with details. And Poe is back. What do I know about being a spiritual leader? What is it you're holding? A cookie? Ah! Our Kids Edition correspondent takes us behind the scenes of the new animated sequel, Kung Fu Panda 4. What was it like to voice Poe's character in the fourth movie? And how has its personality changed over the years? This was probably the most fun I had on a Kung Fu Panda. I really hit it off with the directors and we uh, explored some new parts of Poe's personality and I had a, an awesome teammate mm -hmm. to uh, to go through this, this journey together with. It's probably my favorite Kung Fu Panda. That was close. This is NBC Nightly News, Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm Lester Holt. Always awesome to be with you guys. We've got a terrific lineup ahead, including actor Jack Black. He's back on the big screen, bringing back his role of Poe in Kung Fu Panda 4. He'll speak with our Kids Edition correspondent, Delano, in just a little bit. But first, let's begin with one of the stories making headlines this week. Remember, we told you about the process of electing a U.S. president. Well, this week, former President Donald Trump moved one step closer to getting the Republican Party nomination for president. The former president came out the big winner in what is known as Super Tuesday. People voted in more than a dozen states this week to pick who they want to be the Republican Party nominee. And Mr. Trump was the clear winner. So this means the former president will likely campaign against President Joe Biden, a Democrat, in the November election. Meanwhile, in other news, March marks Women's History Month, a time to celebrate and recognize the achievements women have made through the years. Our friend Ann Thompson has more on how this month got started. March is Women's History Month. The idea for a time to honor women began many years ago. Some historians credit a week-long celebration in Santa Rosa, California in 1978 as being one of the first recognized events. The reason behind this celebration? The group wanted students to learn about women and the contributions they made in history and culture. Then two years later, President Jimmy Carter called for Women's History Week to be recognized nationally in March. From there, the idea grew. Thanks to a petition project, the week turned into a month in the late 80s. And since 1995, each president has issued a proclamation to celebrate Women's History Month. Did you know there have been many female pioneers and trailblazers through the years? Females soaring to new heights. Amelia Earhart completed a 1,700 mile flight. Like Amelia Earhart, who became the first woman to ever fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean, and Sally Ride, who in 1983 became the first American woman in space. Women have also broke ground in government. Shirley Chisholm was the first African-American woman elected to Congress in 1968. The first female Supreme Court justice, that title belongs to the late Sandra Day O'Connor. Sonia Sotomayor became the first Latina Supreme Court justice and Katanji Brown Jackson recently became the first black woman on the Supreme Court. Another first in the nation's capital, Kamala Harris, is the first woman and woman of color vice president. And in the world of music and arts, actress Anna Mae Wong was the first Asian American woman to receive a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And entertainment giants like Aretha Franklin, known as the Queen of Soul, became the first woman to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Women inspiring others and making history. And thanks very much for that. Well, speaking of making history, one young female athlete just broke a huge record on the college basketball court. Let's get details from our friend Jesse Kirsch. 
Caitlin Clark made college basketball history again. The University of Iowa Hawkeyes phenom becoming the all-time NCAA Division I basketball scoring leader with this foul shot. I'm just trying to soak in the moment. A record is a record. I don't want that to be the reason people remember me. I hope people remember me for the way I played with a smile on my face, my competitive fire. That free throw pushing Clark past Pete Maravich's more than 50-year-old record. 3,667 points. We spoke with Pistol Pete's son Jason after Clark moved the mark to 3,685 points and counting. What do you think your dad would make of this moment? I think my dad would be would be extremely happy for us. Uh, I think he would love the way she plays. Even before this game, Clark was on a record-breaking run. Last month, the 22-year-old Iowa guard became the all-time scoring leader for major college women's basketball. Now, Clark has more points than anyone, woman or man. She shoots really well and it's really cool this year. Well, she has given us so much fun this year. It's just unbelievable. Clark helping to transform women's sports while inspiring legions of fans. Hopefully somebody comes after me and breaks my records and I can be there supporting them. And that's what makes the game of basketball so fun. All right, Jesse, thanks. This weekend, it is time to spring forward. Daylight saving time takes place on Sunday, March 10th at 2 a.m. That's when we move the clocks forward by one hour. Here to shed some light on daylight saving time is our friend Zinkley Esimwa. Daylight saving time is a system used around the world for maximizing hours of daylight. Across time zones, at least 70 countries and territories observe the practice, which typically happens twice a year in March and November. Put simply, daylight saving time resets your clock with the goal of getting you more sun at least half the year. How did the practice of daylight saving get started? Well, it's a long story. The concept goes all the way back to Benjamin Franklin. 1784. Quick history lesson. Founding father Benjamin Franklin first alluded to daylight saving in a 1784 letter, though there are competing theories about exactly who proposed the practice. Several countries, including the U.S., Australia, and Great Britain, adopted daylight saving as early as World War I. The United States officially adopted the practice in 1966, following the passage of the Uniform Time Act as a way to conserve energy. And get this, Hawaii and most of Arizona are the only two states that do not observe daylight saving time. Why do you think daylight saving is losing some of its popularity? Well, I think the emphasis has been in the wrong place. Nobody likes to lose an hour of sleep, which we do in every uh, beginning of daylight saving time period. People don't think about why are we doing that? What's the benefit of it? Despite losing an hour of sleep, one of the benefits, more daylight hours to get outside and play. People shouldn't focus on the loss of that hour for one day, but they have to think about the benefit of having standard time for 120 days and daylight time for 240 days. Daylight saving time will return on Sunday, March 10th, when we spring forward. All right, Zinkley, thanks so much. Well, let's head to Texas now for our picture of the week. Say hello to Darcy. Darcy is a female rockhopper penguin. Darcy is the first ever rockhopper penguin to be hatched at the Fort Worth Zoo. Darcy was hatched on December 21st and has already reached some important milestones. The zoo says in about four years, Darcy will develop a stripe that will later become her characteristic yellow crest feathers as she grows into adulthood. Darcy was hatched to attentive parents Frederick and Dot, but we understand the whole colony has taken an interest in her upbringing. Okay, time for our pop quiz. This week we're talking about a favorite topic of a lot of you, movies. The question, the classic movie Wizard of Oz is set in which state? A, Kentucky, B, Kansas, or C, New Jersey? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, time is up. The answer is B, Kansas. The Wizard of Oz, released in 1939, is about a young girl named Dorothy and her dog Toto, who gets swept away from a tornado on the family's Kansas farm to the magical land of Oz and embark on an adventure with three new friends. The movie is based on an adaptation of a children's novel, so we're off to see the wizard and we're not in Kansas anymore. 
or New Jersey or any of the other places I mentioned. I can hear that song in my head, though. We're off to see the wizard. And while we were on the topic of movies, a new one is hitting theaters this weekend. Our favorite panda, Poe, is back on the big screen in the new animated sequel, Kung Fu Panda 4. For kids and grown-ups who haven't heard, what's Kung Fu Panda all about? Well, um, Poe, the dragon warrior, uh, he's been asked to, um, you know, Ugwe, that old turtle in the last film, gave him the staff of wisdom. So now he's supposed to become the spiritual leader of the Valley of Peace and take the place of Ugwe. And Poe doesn't want to do that. Poe wants to go out and fight the bad guys and do Kung Fu. And so uh, he's not ready to just sit around the Valley of Peace. So uh, when it's presented to him that there's a villain out there called the Chameleon, that's uh, really doing bad stuff. Poe's like, you know what? This is my chance to have one last big adventure. And guess what? Actor Jack Black is also back, reprising his iconic role as Poe. Our Kids Edition correspondent Delano caught up with Jack Black and the movie's cast in this week's Spotlight. The Dragon Warrior is back! What do I know about being a spiritual leader? What is it you're holding? A cookie? What was it like to voice Poe's character in the fourth movie? And how has its personality changed over the years? This was probably the most fun I had on A Kung Fu Panda. I really hit it off with the directors and we uh, explored some new parts of Poe's personality and I had a, an awesome teammate mm -hmm. to uh, to go through this, this journey together with. That's probably my favorite Kung Fu Panda. Destroy them! <laughs> What made it so much fun? The secret ingredients have always been kung fu action adventure, which I already love. That's all I need. But then you also add comedy. <laughs> and then like a little personal growth. Who you are will always be a part of what you become. Yeah. And he got, he got an awesome movie. Yes. The dragon warrior is going to be mad when he finds out you took his stick. I am the dragon warrior. Nothing about you says dragon or warrior. Aquafina, what was it like to play Poe's apprentice Zen? And do you think you're similar to her? Um, I think that there are definitely things I could relate to her. She definitely steals a lot. Um, I would be, probably be in jail if I stole that much right now. <laughs> we're, we're both a little complicated, you know? Yeah. Thank you. There's not wanted posters of you all around town? No. <laughs> You're a wanted criminal? You sound surprised. Is it surprising? Not even the great dragon warrior. Who's that? The most powerful shape-shifting sorceress, the chameleon. How do I find this? the chameleon what did you learn from the movie? i learned a little bit about growing and changing and being open to change mm -hmm. that's kind of what it's all about right right Nora? yes absolutely we all change all the time yeah yeah and you you could be afraid of a next chapter like you can be afraid of like going to a new school or you right. can be afraid of like going to a new job or a new life, a new place to live. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you have to embrace change because life is about change and it can be a beautiful thing. What can kids and grown-ups learn from Kung Fu Panda 4? You know, it's okay that it's okay to take that other job. Yeah. And also that sometimes someone you think is your enemy could actually turn out to be a good friend and to keep your mind open for friendship and, and for love this is not working at all what is a big change you've made that's a sick question i love that what's the biggest change you've made i don't know getting used to building a routine alone and like falling asleep with just the wooden creaks of the house and nine day fiance yeah. I mean, the biggest change in my life was uh was uh starting a family my wife and I having two boys, and now they're like 15 and 17 years old. It's an amazing life changer. One of the greatest things about my life, really. What's your favorite part of being a dad? What's my favorite part of being a dad? Mm. I just love it when uh, we have walks and talks and talk about life. Whenever they ask me a question or advice, something like that, which is rare now that they're 15 and 17 <laughs> years old. They're like, oh, dad, you're so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, whenever we're able to share, like, uh, the the things that are important in life, you know, about friends and relationships, and it really kind of gives life meaning. 
All I know are two things, kicking butt and taking names. What lessons can kids take away from the film? Well, Poe, like I told you, he is supposed to change. He's supposed to change his job. He's not supposed to be the butt-kicking dragon warrior anymore. He's supposed to become a spiritual leader, and he doesn't want to change. And I think that's, like, really cool because uh, even for kids, like, what grade are you in? Fourth. Fourth grade. So someday you're going to go from grade school to junior high, and that might be, like, a little scary, right? Or from junior high to mm -hmm. high school. Right. And a change is always weird. You're like, what is the who's going to be in my new classroom? Who's going to be my new teacher? Where do I have to go now? Where's my locker going to be? There's a lot of fear and anxiety that goes for that. That's Poe's learning of like, it's time for me to change. Poe needs to change. And uh, what he learns and what I think an audience might feel in this film is when you change and when you move on, you don't leave anything behind and you don't lose who you are. You go somewhere better and maybe become an even better person than you already are. So it's not scary to go through a change. That's what he learns. And that's what I hope an audience learns. That's a really cool. Thank you for your time. Right on. That was close. Delano, thanks. That was terrific. What a great assignment. Great to have you back on Kids Edition. And we should note that Kung Fu Panda 4 is produced by DreamWorks Animation and distributed by our parent company, NBC Universal. Finally, in this week's inspiring kids series, we introduce you to a teenage trailblazer who is soaring to new heights. Greg Circle with our NBC station WNBC caught up with a 17-year-old on a special day last week. This is a, a student solo. Kamora Freeland's journey began when she was just 15. For public power, I have some golf holding shirt. I've only won Bravo 6. The high school honor student and athlete from Staten Island has also spent the last year and a half. Guys, I'm doing this. Training to become a pilot. Today marked the 17 year old's final exam, an hour long flight to determine if she qualifies for a pilot's license. Right now, today, this is a feeling I've never had. Her anxious mom watched from the ground as the teen tried to go where a few black girls her age have gone before. One of the youngest in America ever, so that's pretty impressive. Cleet Titus has been Kimura's flight instructor. She'll be all right, though. She's going to be all right today. Titus and his former NYPD partner oversee United Youth Aviators, a nonprofit that provides scholarships to help inner city kids earn their pilot's license. Once they really start to believe they can do it, it opens up the gateway like, I can do anything. I'm leaving the airspace for a northeast departure. Kimura was chosen for the aviators program after a three year wait one flight and she was hooked. She said, Ma, I no longer want to be a biologist. I'm going to be a pilot. Today, Kimura touched down her plane here at Republic Airport and made that dream a reality. <laughs> Last week, I've been studying like super hard, so I have I had so much nerves and I was so nervous and I finally passed. I'm proud that she's making history. That's no exaggeration. Industry groups estimate that black women make up less than 1% of the nation's airline pilots. I get to see the world from a different view. It's just amazing. Kimora now wants to pursue her commercial pilot's license. Her journey as a trailblazer only just beginning. There we go. <laughs> yep. Greg, thanks so much for bringing us that terrific story. That's going to do it for us. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, grab the camera, email the question to us at nightlynewskids at NBCUni.com. We'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. Thanks for watching, and remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.